Three. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited because we have Dr. Marcella back on the show. She has a podcast on our series, so I highly suggest that you go on to her podcast. She has amazing episodes all about dieting, about eating disorders, about how to help yourself emotionally, mentally. And she just really goes deep and dives deep into the areas where a lot of people struggle with. So check out her podcast on our channel. And she is part of our podcast community. So don't be afraid to reach out and ask her questions. She's here to help you. And, and that's why she's here today. And today she's going to talk about overcoming everyday language in our culture, about eating disorders and dieting. Our society Society can be, you know, um, you know, very. Uh, there's a lot of myths out there, a lot of misconceptions. The language we use, it could be very harmful and can be very hurting to individuals. And she's going to go dive deeper and explain to you what she means by overcoming your everyday language in our culture when it comes to eating disorders and it comes to dieting. So, Dr. Rosella, it's always an honor to have you on the show. I'm very excited to have you today on our show. Tell everybody exactly what you mean when you talk about overcoming the language. In our culture about eating and diet and, and and all that stuff oh absolutely and like we'll see where, where we go with this it's always like you know we you and i like touch a topic and then we're like oh here we are again <laughs> you know? um i i bring this up uh for the main reason that i work with folks i, I run a body image group and people in the group feel so hopeless about like i'll never love my body i'll never that th this will never happen uh, and I, I share with them that it is a journey, absolutely. Um, and they're like, I don't know what to do. And they're, all, and they're also like, tell me what to do, what I can do. And I often start off saying, look at your words, look at the words, how you describe your body, look at even the words about how you eat um, and, and how you describe food. And so I, I, I wanted to bring this up today, Stacy, because I just hear it everywhere. Um, I was at a at a potluck a couple of days ago and there was like all kinds of food and everyone was bringing just something really yummy and and decadent and 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 just wonderful and that people wanted to share with others um and often you know there's just like a lot of food and i remember one person feeling like oh i didn't have a chance to eat your empanadas and then they were thinking like well but you know i i have a small plate here and so i get to have two you know plates yeah. And so it's kind of like this, like rationalizing of like, oh, I already ate, I, I shouldn't eat an empanada, but since I had a small plate, then I get to have more food as opposed yeah. to that. I just, I just want to try this. Um, it, it sounds, it, it sounds, it sounds yummy. It, it sounds delightful. And thank you for making it for us. Um, so it, was, it, and just that kind of language, I, I just hear common and, and we're just really caught up in it. And first, I want to say this isn't about shame. This isn't about punishment. You know, you like, like, don't use that language. Um, it's more about thinking about the words that we use and how we rationalize or feel like we need to earn our food, particularly food that I'll say is often like carbs and fats, like those are the foods like we need we feel like we need to earn somehow. Um, and so when folks share like, what do I do? Where do I start? I, I often say, look at your words and and your choices of of the words that 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 you use. And are there different words that that you could use? Um, and, and I bring up the, the food um, because we go to social gatherings with food and there's often a lot of food there and we often get full. And usually there's guilt after or um, kind of this laughing like, you know, I'll work this off or I'm, I'll be good tomorrow. And I, I just wanted us to take pause about that. And Stacy would love to hear your, your thoughts too. 
you know, I, I go out with people all the time and I, you know, a lot of times I'll do it sometimes I'll hear my husband do it, you know, and we'll go out, we'll eat something, you know, we know, you know, sometimes maybe we, you know, it's so good. We might have a bite more than, or two bites more than we, you know, we're already feeling that full, full feeling and a body is telling us no more food, please. But you still, you know, you have that one more bite, you justify it. Well, it's just a bite, you know, it tastes so good. And then afterwards you, the guilt starts be, you know, coming in, or you might feel that over full feel and then you feel disgusted with yourself like, oh I overate you know and 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 I think too in our society you know we're so self-critical also we, we never you know I, I I've been trying to lose weight for the past 10 years and I still I'll look in the in the mirror and I I, I won't be happy with certain parts of my body and I want to change it so bad but then I also see myself as much as I want to change it and as much as I do things to change it I could be doing more and I don't, you know, so it's like, you know what, you, we can say things, but we also have to put a call to action too. And I'm guilty of it myself. You know, I always talk about my stomach and how I have a little bit of a stomach that I need to lose. You know, after I had my kids, I got that little belly bump and I, for the last, I, I can't, you know, my kids are grown up and I'm still trying to lose that belly bump or at least make it, at least make it look a little prettier and, you know, certain parts of my body. But it's like, you know, you look in the mirror, you don't like what you see, but what are we doing to change it? You know, you know, I remember one person had said, imagine what you'd like to look like every time you have something in front of you, because it could be so tempting when you have all that, you go to those gatherings and you have all that food there and you want to try everything and, you know, or, and we try to justify it in our head, you know, well, I, just like you said, well, I could, you know, I'll be good tomorrow. I've, I've used that excuse many times. I'll be good tomorrow. I'll, you know, I'll have a light, you know, lunch and I'll, I'll, I'll exercise a little and I'll do this and I'll be fine. But, you know, it, that's not a good attitude to have. I don't think, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, and, and folks got to do what, what, what folks need to do. I, some folks share, like, I need to have contain, you know, con containment, or I, I, I need this very harsh language because I'm, I'm, I'm overeating. And I, and, and at times I want to, you know, and I do respect folks choices. And I also ask like, but how is that working for you? If you're, if you're okay with, with this degree of self-criticism or this degree of very harsh discipline, I, 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 I can't imagine a, a lifestyle around that. I, I particularly can't imagine a lifestyle around that with, with food. If yeah. there is something where you know, like, it's hard for me to stop eating, then you might want to take a look at like, so what is my relationship with food? Is there some emotional eating happening that um, where things just just take over? Um, and especially if there's like this kind of harsh deprivation and this degree of, of discipline, you're also setting up deprivation. And so when you go into these um, events where there's a lot of food, it's also that kind of that mentality of like, okay, I get to have this free range right now, but then tomorrow I'm back to being quote unquote good. And also I can imagine like, is that even enjoyable if you're, if you're eating beyond full? Um, because this is the one time you're going to give yourself that time to have those cupcakes and then the chocolate and the, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. it's like, I also can't imagine that being fun also. And so it's just more so then folks start share again, like, so then what do I do? How do I start? And so I, I often say like, why don't you try changing some of your vocabulary? Why don't you try changing some of the, like, I'll be good tomorrow, as opposed to, yeah, there was a lot of food here. I overate. I feel a little uncomfortable in my stomach. Um, that feeling will pass. And I'm feeling guilty and I, I'm going to work with my guilt and how do I soothe my guilt? And then tomorrow I'll be hungry again and I'm going to give myself three enjoyable meals. Um, um, so, and I know that, you know, that takes also practice too, like what I just said, like that, that takes a long time to get to that, but just, 
how can we just note that, oh, um, maybe right now it's just diet culture taking over um, and, and, and noting like when I say I'll be good tomorrow or well, I have a small plate, so I get to have two plates of food. Just note that like, oh, yeah, that yeah. Is, that is diet culture taking over. We never as human beings ever had to earn our food. When, 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 when was that a thing? Um, so it's just noting like, like, let's really break it down and, and really remind ourselves over and over again, like nourishment and food pleasure and enjoyment are not things we earn. These are right. basic human rights for our ourselves, our longevity, our connection with ourselves, our connection with others, our, our culture, like those are just, we don't earn those things. Those are our basic human rights and, and principles and values of, of who we are. You know, there, there's three things I think of. One, I think of the environment we come from in, in, in our, our society, you know, everywhere you go, everything is served in huge plates. You know, we're, 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 we're taught that it's okay to have these huge portions, you know, we see, you know, and then when I grew up, you know, the, the you know, and even when my grandparents grew up, it's like finish everything on your plate, you know, so it's like you, you go to these big restaurants, you get these big portions that, you know, this, you know, sometimes these places can give you three, four days worth of food in, in one, in one, you know, serving. And, you know, some people's mentality is like, you know, clean everything off my plate. You know, I, you know, it, it's, it's on my plate. I got to clean it off. You know, this is how I was taught in my environment. And there are other people who just love food. They say, you know, they have, they always say, I love food. You know, that's, this is why I eat, you know, but then I see people that I know that have, you know, trauma in their lives or they've had trauma in their lives and they're overweight and, you know, they'll use the excuse why well, I, I love food. But then I think to myself, do you love food or are you using food as a coping mechanism, you know, and, and are we justifying it saying, yes, it's okay to eat, you know, um, because, you know, tomorrow I'll be better, but you know, what's the root cause is the root cause that you've been taught this in your environment. Is it because you, you know, because you are trying to deal with problems that you, you know, that go back, you know, that you, you're using food as a coping mechanism or, you know, and, and uh, or do, is it is it true? Do you just love food? And if you just love food, then why can't you learn how to learn how to eat in a healthy way? Is it because you're surrounded by people who eat in large portions or, you know, but but then when you look in the mirror and if, if you don't like what you see, you know, what's stopping you from changing, you know, and, and making changes in, in yourself or getting that help to learn how to start? Mm. Yeah, those, um, the, the, the thought or, or the question around food portions in our, in our society, and I feel like in our American society, um, is, is really, um, notable, um, in that, um, I feel like we just operate in such extremes. I mean, we're, um, I mean, we are the, the, the messages and the dieting and change your body. You can do this, um, get up, you can do this. And the before and after pictures, I mean, all of that. And then, um, so there's like that one extreme and then just going to a restaurant and ordering a plate of food and being like, Oh my God, you know, like that's, that's a lot. You just served me a platter, not a plate. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and I could see, um, what I often see or, or feel is like when that platter is being served, this kind of like, like, it feels like anxiety for folks like, Oh, what, what do I do as opposed to, all right, this is the food I've been served. Um, kind of looking at it going, most likely I'm gonna be taking some of this home. Um, yeah. And that's, and that, that's okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to reckon with, with that, you know, of, of like the really large portions of, of, of food. Um, I also, it, um, and if folks, um, so that's, that, that's one part. And I feel like that that's just another example of our extreme 
society. Um, and then really putting folks down for, um, for that kind of, for, for, for eating as opposed to, why don't we take a look at how we operate as a, as a society? Um, yeah, this extreme kind of, and then when we see examples of exercise, we also see very heavy duty, like dripping with sweat, kind of that, like, you really have to like exercise to the point where you're, um, again, extreme exercise. Like, yeah, if we don't see exercise as leisurely walks or stretching or anything, but again, so it's just all this extreme, extreme, extreme. Um, so I, I, first, I don't like that, you know, it, it and yeah. it's just it's like, as I'm talking to you and sharing that, it's just like, I feel exhausted, just like noticing yeah. all of that. Um, and if you grew up with, you know, clean your plate and there's food as, as, as coping. I mean, I, I work with folks with eating disorders who have full blown eating disorders where I'm actually concerned medically about them. And I work with folks um, who have just this emotional eating where they've shared like, I have this relationship with food that I just don't like. Um, and, and they share too of that, you know, they, they've also shared like, you know, when I look at myself in the mirror, they say like, it's not so much that I don't like what I see. They said, what I don't like is that seeing that this emotional relationship with food that I have, I could see that. And, and that's what I don't like. And so we, we, um, we, we, we talk, I mean, sure, there are some strategies we, we can talk about, but we also just talk about one's emotional relationship with food and, and where food is used as, as, as coping, um, where food, where there's a lot of attunement, um, with, with oneself and, and food. And so, um, and again, that also takes, takes time to build. Yeah. You know, and, and, and it is, it, it, we, we lived in, in a society where it, it's, it's very hard, you know, um, and then you can be very scared when you see the before and after our society makes you think that you have to work so hard and you, you know, you don't really have to work that hard. If you learn how to eat right and you learn how to incorporate, you know, some exercise into your diet, you can actually drop the weight. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be this strenuous thing. And and a lot of the people that I I I know that have gone on these extreme diets and they've gone on these these exercise binges, a lot of them, as soon as they stop, they gain all the weight back. So, you know, it, it's, it's like an up and down roller coaster ride for them, you know, um, so does that go back to the way we think and, and our body, you know, the, our, the language in our culture, you know, we, we, we're giving people the wrong messages, I think we're, we're, you know, and then we, we go, we go up and down, up and down and, you know, in our weight. And then I think we're too hard on ourselves too, you know, we, our body image, like, you know, we were talking about talking about our language but, you know, you know, we're so hard on ourselves, you know, sometimes people put themselves so down that their self-worth goes down and either they don't think they're worthy to, to look and feel better, or they just don't think they can do it, you know, and, and I've seen that also. I, what's your input on that? My input is that when you pursue body image to lose weight, you're setting yourself up. Um, as opposed to, I'm going to pursue body image to be connected with my body. I'm going to pursue being attuned to my eating, to be connected with my eating, to have a one, to have a wonderful, pleasurable relationship with food. When you start bringing weight loss into the picture, you are really, you're starting to set yourself up for disappointment, for expectations, um, because at the end of the day, we don't know what your body's going to do. Yeah. Uh, your body might lose weight. It might not lose weight. Does that mean all your efforts to reconnect with yourself and with food are then not, not worth it? And I, I would say no to that. If, if you were going on a journey of like, I want to start developing more attunement to my eating and just notice um, when I'm hungry, when I'm full, 
what feels good right now and, and also what can I what can I I, I access um, if I want to have movement because I want to be flexible I want to be strong um, um, I have, have various goals in mind that, that, that I want to do um, and when you start to bring in weight loss into that you can really start to muddy the waters um, and, and so I mean so that's why um, so I I just want to note that and, and, and ask folks of that. I hear you on wanting to lose weight. Absolutely. Our, our society, even our, our medical, like um, I'm sure doctors tell folks all the time, you need to lose weight, you need to lose weight. Um, and so um, I just want to, to note that, you know, that sometimes um, weight loss may happen, sometimes it may may not. Um, uh, so I, I just want to note that while folks work on having a more harmonious relationship with food and their and their bodies, um, and that does go back to the language you use. Like like note your language. Note your language of oh I didn't work out today, therefore I can only eat X Y and Z, and I can't have. A, B, and C. Um, note that when you're at, at, at gatherings, you know, we're all probably going to overeat at a gathering because there's a lot of food. And note like when you start to feel guilty or when you start to feel like, well, then I'll have, make sure I eat a salad tomorrow. Like just really start to note that. Um, our bodies change as we get older. Um, and, and note that like there is a process where we like there might be or a um a grieving process as we as our bodies change and like okay of course of course there is some of that loss and also note that it is a privilege to get older too um so how do we how do we just start to bring in more of that vocabulary and i I often tell folks like maybe there are just some words you can swap out. Maybe um, like what folks say, I hate myself, let's say, and like, and they and they tell me like I can't just go and start to saying I love myself. Like it's just I, or um, I, they're like or I more like I hate my body. I, I will use that one as an example. And it's not like folks can just turn around and barely say like, well, I love my body. And they're like, Marcella, I I, I that's not gonna work. Um, then I'm like, maybe let's let's take hate out and bring in another. Like, I'm having challenges with my body. I'm I'm having some issues with my body. Um uh, like like can you start there? And and maybe for some folks, like I just need to work towards neutrality. Like, like if I aim for loving my body, I'm just gonna get disappointed. So how about if I just aim for neutrality where I'm like, I just don't hate my body? I'm like, okay that's if that's where you're like that's the goal in front of me great great um and um so it's it's just noting of like where can you start to say things differently swap out words particularly the words that are very harsh and very critical because that kind of mentality of i feel guilty i want to lose weight i mean that's that that takes time to to break to break down and, and to be free of that. Um, so while we're still like okay, that's still there. Like recognize like that's diet culture. That's diet culture. That's diet culture. And the things I say to myself, I do want to shift that. I have control of those of of what I say to myself. So I'm going to swap out words. Yeah, yeah. And and once you're able to swap out words, you know. How does you know? How does that motivate someone mentally to get to the next step where they where they they start maybe start taking action and they start trying to do things to to help their 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 dieting process or their or their eating disorder and so forth. I'm gonna go with like folks who do like more of the emotional eating. Um, I feel like folks with eating disorders that's that's um, that that requires a bit more intervention but with folks who just have this emotional relationship with food I think when you start to swap out the words um, 
you start to give yourself more permission, I, I, I think, to, um, to uh, let me stop for a second. Like, I think when folks start to swapping out the words, they're less harsh on themselves. And when you're less harsh on yourself, you don't have this push pull like deprivation and then I'm all in and overeating. Deprivation as a, um, when I think when the words start being swapped out, then it's, it's just not as extreme, like deprivation all in. It just starts to come more to the, the middle of like, okay, what am I feeling like? Oh, okay. Um, and maybe some folks are still making choices around like, okay, I'm, I have to have my salad today and asking folks like, okay, when you're having your salad, then, um, how can you enjoy it? Yeah. Like, you start to bring in aspects where you can enjoy the, the salad. Like, is there something in your salad that, that you can add to make it enjoyable? Because I, I guarantee if all you're doing is having iceberg lettuce and raw vegetables, like you're not going to enjoy that. Um, yeah. so it, it's how, how, how to bring that, that in more. I tell folks of like, of like noting when, when, when you're eating, like some folks eat really, really fast. Um, and noting like, are there ways to slow down? Are there ways to like start to have a dialogue around? Okay, um, I'm, I'm engaging. Um, this is my food. I want to, I want to in enjoy it right now. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I tell folks like, um, because folks share like, well, I can never have a bag of cookies in my house because I'm, I'm, I'm going to eat it all. And I share like, well, in time you will. Because in time, when you start to remove deprivation, and I'll say like um, making your salads more yummy, I, I just use yeah. that as an example, then the power of the cookies will really start to go down. Um, and in the meantime, yeah, you may not be able to have a bag of cookies in your house, so don't set yourself up for that. But just note like, okay, but I'm going to bring in pleasurable foods. And I, and I tell folks like, you know, in the meantime, then go to a cafe or something where you can have a cookie and really take the time to enjoy that knowing mm -hmm. that in time i'll be able to have you know a cookie in in my house um right. and 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 so it, it 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 takes some some building up and as that starts to happen then there's a way that you could we can start to neutralize food um little right. by little yeah I like that. Now, with today's conversation, if you had to really look at everything we talked about in our conversation, what are some things you'd like to really emphasize to the listeners? So, you know, important uh, aspects that you think will really make a difference in their lives. I'm going to ask the listeners to spend one day, like even writing down and noting everything you say to yourself about food and your body and, and, and write it down. Um, maybe you'll write down 10 phrases, maybe you'll write down 20, maybe you'll write down five and, and just note those and be like, okay, this is what I say to myself. Okay. Right. And, and take a look at that and see like, okay, can I swap out some words? Um, so I'll say like, start, start there. Um, and just bringing in as much curiosity as, as possible. Like, like what you're saying to yourself is diet culture and saying like okay well i don't want diet culture to live in my head rent free <laughs> you know? um so i'm going to i am I'm, I'm gonna bring in curiosity because i want to say things to myself that i own that feel good um and 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 i'm not there yet so i'm gonna yeah. take these phrases that i say to myself every single day because they're very automatic and bring in a lot of curiosity and, and tenderness with myself and saying, it's okay, it's okay. This is diet culture. And now are there some words that I can swap out just to make it less harsh? Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that a lot. Now tell us some of the services that you provide. Um, I, um, I'm a psychologist in the state of California. So I see folks from a range from emotional eating to body image to full blown eating disorders, teens and adults. 
I also do consultation with, um, with, with any type of um, therapist, medical provider, um, healer, if they are working with a client or a patient with an eating disorder, um, or they want to um, incorporate, or they, they, they want to build their, their, their skill set. Um, I also, I, you know, I'm starting to work more with organizations to help them, like how to build, um, how to build an, an, uh, an, an eating disorder service center in, in their place. Um, I also provide trainings for uh, various clinics and schools and, and organizations on a range from body image to how to how to address eating disorders in your in your practice. Um, and I have a newsletter that comes out a few times a year where we look at eating disorders, we look at diet culture, um, and yeah, I, in a nutshell, that's those are the main things that I that I do offer. Now, if people wanted to go onto your newsletter, where can they find you? They can find me at my website, um, www.marcellaedeatingdisordertraining.com. And you could sign up for my, for my newsletter there. Great. And Elsa, if they wanted to do a consultation, can they find you on your website also for a consultation there's as well? There's a consultation page and there's an, an appointment where you could just book and um, then yes. Oh, I love it. I think today was so important. I'm so glad you came on the show to talk about eating culture because I, you know, I, I think people, you know, sometimes if we change the words we use, you know, it, trying to get back on track and trying to obtain a, a, a healthy way of eating and, and starting to feel good about yourself can become a lot easier because it, it, it is hard when you look in the mirror and you don't like who you see, you know, but I think, you know, by changing the words we use, instead of saying, I hate my body, you know, you, you know, you, you can use a different phrase that's not harsh on yourself because it, it's, it's, it'll never, you know, get us anywhere to be harsh on our own selves, you know, it's just, um, you know, it's only going to cause us more inner pain. And, you know, by by using the right language, like you mentioned throughout this video, I think it can be a lot easier when you've, you're starting to begin the process of changing the way you think, changing the way you react to eating and and start, you know, a healthy way of looking at food and not looking at it as, as your, you know, as something that's bad, but just learn how to use it appropriately so we can reach our goals and expectations in the future. So I'm really happy you came on the show today to talk about this. Thank you so much. Is there anything else you'd like to close with before we go? No, I, I think you and I, I think we went on a journey and we came back to like, like note your words. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Marcella. I, I love when you come on. You always have great advice. And uh, I look forward to our next show with you. You are just an amazing person. And this is something that's really warranted in our society. So thank you so much. Thank you. You have a great day. You too.